you, Jesus. Well, God bless everybody. Tell your neighbor, welcome to church. Hallelujah. We have people coming in, people here, and we have people watching all around the world. Someone say amen. I encouraged uh, Tommy as he is assisting and, and uh, serving in that area of the media department. I, I received a text. Um, uh, when did I send you that text, Tommy? Monday? Monday? I received a text from someone, and uh, uh, it was just one of those texts that you just needed to hear that, um, you know, this Sunday service was just supernatural. And to see God's unconditional love fall upon his people on that scripture, John 3.16, uh, was like, like no other. I'm encouraged to see the video. Uh, having the renewals of the vows, having a wedding proposal. I mean, God's love just over took us that Sunday. People uh, called and text and emailed our page and said they had never heard a message on John 3.16 uh, like that. Uh, talking about, what do we talk about? The danger. Also, the duty and the destiny of John 3.16. And this person texts us saying how that day Sunday, it just, it just didn't start good. How many have had a day like that, huh? Maybe you've had a day that just didn't start well. But by the end of hearing the Lord, things began to turn around. Now do that with me right now. Why don't you all stand up right now? And just do a turnaround just like that. There you go. You see, it didn't, it didn't work good in our favor. We woke up, some, 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 call, call, text, text, email, email, heard about this, whatever took place yesterday and woke me up this way. But there was a turnaround that took place in that service. And thousands of miles away, this individual was touched by the Lord, Amen. gave their life to Jesus, and was set free. Amen. 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 And it's, it's beautiful, it's powerful, it's awesome, it's amazing, it's, it's, we can't all completely understand uh, the ways of God. But when you give your life to him, he then begins to operate his will in you. And uh, it's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. I had somebody just text one of our church members saying, why isn't live stream on? When is it going to, are y'all having church today? Yes, we're having church today. Glory to God. And uh, it's just a blessing how we have the privilege Listen, church, to step into this house and honor the Lord. I was at a, at a, a concert yesterday, was honored to go to Casting Crowns. And uh, the leader's name is Mark Hall. And uh, he said this, Sebastian, he says, hey, I'm just a youth pastor. He travels the world singing music to everybody. I'm just a youth pastor. I don't miss church, he said. He said, I'm faithful Wednesdays and I'm faithful Sundays. He goes, because I know in this time and this need of our world, families is what's important. And he said, and my duty as a youth pastor is to pour into these students and to their parents' lives every Wednesday and every Sunday. He says, we travel the world Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He goes, I might make it in three o'clock in the morning on Saturday, but I know my call on that Sunday. That ministered to me, Mom, because here's a man who is known worldwide. His group is known worldwide. They could continue their ministry with music, 
but he knows the call of God upon his life and the faithfulness it takes to produce what he is expecting. And that's a blessing. And that helped me understand, even though he could be all around the world, he chooses, chooses his days wisely. He said, and it was very powerful, he said, this time last year, I got that call from the doctor, and the doctor said, you have cancer. He said, God gave me supernatural strength, and he gave me songs to sing. When he said that, whoo, I just saw those S's. Strength and songs. So what are we going to do tonight? We're going to sing. Come on. So what's going to happen? We're going to gain what? Strength. He was diagnosed with cancer. And to this day, a year later, he was at the AT&T Center praising God, worshiping him and said, today I stand before all of you cancer free. That is a sign and a wonder, church. It's a sign and a wonder. And I know it's here tonight. Someone say it's here tonight. He that believeth all things are possible. Lift your hands right now. Father, we come to you in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. And we, as we sing tonight, we know we will have strength tonight. We know that you will encourage us tonight. We know you will fill us tonight. We know that tonight is not just an ordinary night, but it's a night filled with supernatural power. And Lord, because you have given us that supernatural power, Lord, we give you our life afresh and anew. And I say, Lord, have your way tonight. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us to worship you in this free house. And we bless your name and declare Jesus is Lord. And everyone said amen. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him, get your praise on. Come on. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's worship him. Come on, let's lift up the name Father, of Father, we ask you right now to open up the sky and pour out a blessing. Yeah. Father, I just want to be where you are. My life is filled with everything but you. Lord, I really want to see your glory. Let the fire of heaven fall on me. Come on. Can you see my passion? Can you see my hunger? Know how long for you. No walls between us. Take away this darkness. Come break this heart of stone. Hear our cry. Open up the sky. Yeah. Open up the sky. Open up the sky. Come on, everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, there is a feeling that soon we're going to see your kingdom come. Tell me, can you hear the sound of desperation? Oh, pray. Can you feel my passion? Can you see my hunger? Do you know how long for you? No walls between us. Take away this darkness. Come break this heart of stone. Hear our cry. And open up the sky. 
sky. Hey, yeah. Open up the sky. Oh, Lord. Open up the sky. Open up the sky. Lord, I really want to see it. Lord, I really want to see your glory. See my hunger. Do you know how long? Oh, I long, I long, I long, I long to worship. Take away this darkness. Come break this heart of song. Hear our cry. Come on, open up the sky. Come on, lift up your hands. Open up the sky. Come on, lift up your hands and sing. Open up, open up the sky. Yeah. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing in this place right now. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place right now, Father. Oh, you. Let your glory just fall upon us tonight, Father. Yeah, Lord, Lord, I really want to see your glory. So let the fire of heaven fall on me. Can you feel my passion? Can you see my hunger? Do you know how long? How long, how long, how long? Take away this darkness, come break this heart of song, hear our cry. Open up the sky, open up the sky, oh Lord, open up the sky, open up the sky, open up the sky, yes, open up the sky. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Open up the sky, yeah, yeah, Lord. Lord, I really want to see your glory. Let the fire of heaven fall on me. Come on, sing it again. Lord, I really want to see your glory. Lord, I really want to see your glory. Oh, so let the fire of heaven fall on me. See my hunger, do you know how long for you know all between us? Take away this darkness, come break this heart of stone, hear our cry. Open up the sky, open up the sky. Open up the sky. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, give the Lord a praise offering tonight. We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your mighty name tonight, Father. You're glorious in your house, Father. We love you, Father. You are so great and greatly to be praised, Lord. Bless your mighty name. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. You Come on, are church. great. Come on, let's you build this great. altar. You Come are on. great. Come on, let's come up. Come on. You give life. Come on. You are love. You bring life. We worship you, Lord. The dark. Come on. You give hope. You're gonna find time to refresh him. You restore as you come to this altar. Every heart that is broken. Come on. Pray 
Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great, great are you, Lord. sing that tonight. Great are you, Lord. Hey! 
times like this that a refreshing comes. It's times like this where you find water even in a desert. says if we draw to him he will draw to us we teach our children especially during our summer BBC vacation Bible camp we teach our children how to spell worship we ask them the question and we say how do you who can spell worship and our brave five-year-olds who are just learning the alphabet raise their hand with anticipation for their name to be called. And a five-year-old begins to spell worship, W-O-R. And maybe that's what we do when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We begin to worship Him. We worship Him because He is God. But as you mature in Christ, as you grow in God, as you live for Him, you don't spell worship. W-O-R. But you spell it P-O-U-R. Because you pour everything within you to our Heavenly Father. See, that's when you become no longer just a worshiper, but you are a warrior. You stand in the midst of adversity. You stand strong when everything else is tragic and falling apart. When the chaos comes, and the winds and the wave comes. Your boat does not sink. Because you've learned the gift of God as you give back to Him. So worship tonight is not W-O-R. Worship tonight is P-O-U-R. We're going to pour out our love, our life to Him. I break the hindrance that is hindering you. You might be here right now. You might be watching in your living room. There is a hindrance holding you back. You feel as if you cannot be set free. Sin has taken you captive. In your mind, you're bound. And in your flesh, you're bound. Your spirit is leaping, jumping, thirsty. The Lord is here to set you free. He's here to loose and take those chains off of your life. He doesn't want you to walk bound. He doesn't want you to walk in pain. He doesn't want you to walk in shame. He says, tonight is my gain. And I will break and loose those areas that have kept, that have hindered you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we receive. We receive. I receive. Who needs to be set free? Who needs to be set free? Who needs to be set free tonight? 
who needs to be set free tonight. There is a freedom in this house that no chain can hold. There's a victory in this house that he's making it very plain for you. He would say, if you pour out to me, that means all of you comes out. Everything good you've done, everything bad you've done, everything bad I've done, I, everything good I've done, we pour it out. And what does God do? He fills you. And not only fills you, but overflows. So I release now in the name of Jesus. A freedom that breaks those chains. And his name is Jesus. I say be free in the name of Jesus. Spirit of envy, you leave this house. You have no place in this home. I sense it very strong. It's gripped your life. It's kept you down. I speak to you and I say go. And do not return. Leave. In the name of Jesus. I break every chain. I bind now. I loose now. I declare the enemy is defeated. I declare he has no charge over you. I declare we are loose from that in the name of Jesus. Here, just lift your hands. How do I do that, Pastor? I surrender. I just say yes to him. I say I give you all of me. I surrender. Surrender. That means not my way nor my will. I surrender your way, your will. Come on. Let it just saturate you right now. His presence is here. The altar's open. The altar's open. The altar's open. to sit, sit. If you have to kneel, kneel. If you have to come and raise your hand, just do as the Lord would lead you now. In the name of Jesus, let's worship. Tasted and see the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes free, 
what the Bible says. This is what the word of the Lord says. That Lewis and this whole team did, did not even know what I'd be ministering tonight. My wife didn't even know what I'm going to be ministering tonight. And it's about the flood. It's about the flood. The first song you sang, Lewis, was open up the heavens. And now we're into this song about your presence and how it comes like a flood. When a flood takes place, it consumes all. Come on. Genesis chapter 6 and chapter 7. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them and the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were beautiful and they took for themselves wives. The Lord said, My spirit shall not strive, shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, Genesis chapter 6. Yet his day shall be 120. And in that day there were giants on the earth. In those days and afterward, then the sons of God come to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. And Mighty men who were of old and Renowned. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent and every thought of his heart was only evil. The Lord was sorry that he even created man. He was grieved in his spirit and in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created, verse 7. I will destroy them from the very face of the earth, both man, beast, creeping thing, and those that fly. I am so sorry that I have made them. Verse 8. 8 in your Bible is new beginnings. But Noah, someone say, but Noah. Found favor, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 16, 9 says, excuse me, Chronicles 16, 9. 
says the eyes of the Lord, they look throughout the entire world, looking for those that his spirit can be poured into, those that are faithful, trustworthy, those that will put him first. He says his eyes look. Here Noah found. What does that mean? God was looking. Found grace, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And this was a genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. The earth was totally corrupt, filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt and all the flesh had corrupted their way of the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of flesh has come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark. He then begins to give clear instructions about what Moses is fixing, excuse me, Noah is fixing to build. Chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and your household, because I have seen that you are righteous. In this generation, you shall take with you seven, each of every clean animal, male and his female, to each of animals that are unclean, male and of his female, seven birds. He continues to explain and in detail give Noah instructions about his assignment that's just ahead of him. Tonight, I want to briefly talk about our walk with the Lord. Y'all can be seated, the praise team, just where you are. There's an anointing in this house. Our walk with the Lord. It's not my wife's walk my walk. Come on. It's not my pastor's, it's my walk. Someone say with me, it's my walk. My walk. <clears throat> I'm here to talk about your walk with God. Somebody the other day, Tommy, told me, I don't like how you preach, you're too hard. Had another person say, you sure code things can't please them all. The good thing is we're not here to please man. Right. Here to honor the Lord. Right. You know what I immediately thought, Tommy, when that person told me, you're too hard? I thought of hell. And I thought of him yelling at me. You should have preached harder. And then the Lord told me, no, son, he should have listened harder. So I shall preach. Hell is real. And heaven is real. The whole entire world, God was sorry. He created the earth. He created man, woman. He created every living beast, every creeping thing, and every flying animal. Every sea animal, creature. He created all valleys, hills, flowers, trees. He created everything. It was his garden. His fruit of his labor. Cain murdered his son, his brother, Abel. Wanted to please God. 
with his pride, with his work. You'll never go anywhere by just pleasing by work. You're not saved through work. Come on, somebody. Abel brought blood. So the world began to be corrupt in its ways. Flesh began to gain more territory. The Bible I just read here, the minds were filled with destructive thoughts, violence, and evil. Kind of sounds like what we're living in today. Amen. The devil was in the garden with Adam. The devil was in the garden with Jesus. What makes us think he won't be in our garden? Our walk with God. Noah was living his life as a righteous, blameless man. Seems pretty impossible. But Noah found favor with God. God said, I'm going to destroy everything. I'm even going to collapse the world. Get rid of everything. My creation. He was upset. Sorry, the Bible says, of the corrupt ways of man. But God, such a loving father, was trying to find a son. He's trying to find a daughter. He's trying to find one or two or ten or a hundred. But in his search, he found one. We're not talking about Noah's family. We're talking about Noah. I'm not talking about your relationship with your husband. I'm not talking about your relationship with your wife. I'm not talking about your relationship with your boss. I'm not talking about your relationship with your children. I'm talking about your relationship with God. Because it is our walk. And we all have a choice. Noah found favor found grace in the eyes of God. What causes me to do good in my walk with God? What do I benefit? What, what brings me to that level? I have a few points here I want to deliver. And the first, as I walk with God, It brings me favor and grace. We need favor and we need grace. Grace is something that we don't deserve, but we need it. And we found it in the atonement and sacrifice of our Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. He became that grace, that substitute to cover our sin so that we could have favor with God. My walk with God also, point number two, gives me power to overcome sin. He was found what? Blameless. So his walk with God gave him the power to overcome sin. In other words, gave him the strength to tell sin, you cannot live in my life. Jesus died for that sin, and his death was not in vain. Therefore, that sin 
that has corruption, that has destruction, and that will separate me from God does not live with me because I walk with God. Noah walked with God. So what did it do? It brought him what? Favor and brought him what? Grace. What else did it do? It gave him the power to do what? Overcome sin. Not saying it will come. Not saying that it won't. It will come. It will come. Yea, though I walk through. Come on. Jesus even said, when it comes, be of good cheer. I have overcome it. And he says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. He also says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. He says, even in the point of temptation, I make a door of exit for you to walk out that door. He says, I put before you life and death. Choose life. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what God says when we're walking with him. He says, I'll give you grace. Who did he give us? Jesus. I'll give you favor. What does that mean? He'll promote you while everyone else is demoted. He'll pick you up when everyone else is falling on their faces. Come on. What else will he do? He'll give you the power to overcome sin. I'm in a situation and sin is before me. Temptation has come knocking at my door. What do I need? I need his power of his spirit power to come away from that. The Bible says flee from the enemy. Resist him. Resist him and he shall flee from you. Resist him. Say no, no, I shall not be a part of that. Say no, I shall not do that because it is my walk with God that I find grace Amen. what is that grace salvation Amen. what is that favor come on he keeps promoting you he keeps giving you come on he keeps blessing you he keeps providing for you come on he keeps he keeps he keeps you right where you need to be and then you find the power, the strength to overcome sin. We all need that because sin comes to all. Temptation comes to all. Don't make a difference how many PhDs you have. Don't make a difference what side of the railroad tracks you live. Come on, somebody. It comes to all. Rich, poor, medium, whatever, big, small, don't matter. Spiritual giants or little giants, we don't matter. It'll come. It'll come. But he gives you the power. Why? Because I walk with him. Amen. What else does it do? Tommy, number three, my last point. Walking with my Lord, walking with God, also keeps my relationship open for instructions. Amen. My intimate relationship, my worship at his home, my, my daily intake of his word. My, 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 my love for him by reaching out to people, by serving people, by giving of my, of my blessings and offerings and tithing. That is my, my intimate relationship with God. And out of that obedience, it keeps my ears, it keeps my heart open for instructions. Noah walked with God, therefore God can trust Noah with the ark. And he gave Noah, we just read it, he gave Noah Clear instructions. Genesis 6, 14. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. He gives the measurements. He gives the direct diagram and tells them exactly what he needs to do. From every inch to every cover every door and door and every hinge he says this is what you do and so for a hundred years Noah built the ark but not just Noah his family come on somebody and not just his family but everyone that was around also helped build that ark and as they were building he was preaching come on Noah wasn't going to 
the other city to preach the word. Come on. He wasn't going way over there to tell them about the flood. He was preaching right where he was. Someone just got set free. He didn't have to go across to see Pastor Kim to call himself a missionary. He put a mission in his heart and he took care of it. Hallelujah. And he began to use what God gave him. Because he walked with him, and so his heart was open for instructions. God could trust him, and he built the ark. And everyone else that came and helped, everyone that labored, as they were hamming and they were laughing, you're crazy. Did you know heathens will build this church? Did you know the unjust sow seeds to this church? The wealth of the evil, wicked, is laid up. Laid up. Come on. It piles up for the just. Amen. Someone just got set free. They were laughing at him. hundred years he was preaching. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. We're all going to die. We don't get into his ark. This is our, this is our, our, our refuge. It's our salvation. What you building? What you building? You already got a house. What you building? You, you already got what you building? What you building? What you building? Well, you already had your life. What you doing? What you doing? He was building naturally and he was building spiritually. But everyone had to make that choice. Everyone had to hear. Everyone had to make that choice. Deliverance call. Chapter 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, come in the ark. Notice, notice what God said. Listen to this. Someone will hear it. God didn't say go into the ark. He didn't say uh, make your way that way in the ark. He said what? So if he's telling us to come, where is God? He say, I'm, I'm in the ark. I've been here all along. Come on, somebody. I've, I've been in that situation. I have already know how to overcome it. I've already been there with you. Come on, I'll be there again. I'm in the ark. Come to the ark. He didn't tell, he didn't tell Noah, get in there. He didn't push him. He didn't say, get, 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 get in there and give him a kick. He said, come. See, God is a father, and he invites you. He calls you and goes, hey, you want to have supper? Come on. He says, hey, what you doing tonight? You have time for me? Can you sit on my lap and hug me? Can you call me? Can you love on me? He said, come into the ark. Come into the ark. Listen to this. He said, come into the ark and all of your household. Not talking about those that live with you. He's talking about your entire lineage. He said, all those that believe the way you believe. He said, come into the ark. He said, everybody you preach to, they have an opportunity to come inside this ark. Everybody that believes, everybody that will follow you, Noah, because you've walked with me. You found grace and favor in my name. You have had power to overcome sin. And now you have a relationship with the instructions that I've given you. Everyone come into the ark. Who's in the ark? God is in the ark. The, be, the obedience of one man set a generation free. Come on. Your obedience to pray for your son, your daughter, will set them free. Your obedience to pray for your spouse will keep them free. Your obedience to Jesus Christ with your love, with your giving, with your blessing, with, with, with your faithfulness. Your household will have that open door at the ark. Come on. Listen to this. Because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. It didn't come free. It came with sacrifice. If we want our family set free, saved. If we want our loved ones set free, saved. It's going to be a sacrificial walk. 
We're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. We're going to have to carry some things even when it seems too hard to carry. We're going to have to march through it. Verse 16, chapter 7. And I'll end with this. So those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. You see, Noah did all the Lord asked him to do. He built the ark. God said, come into the ark. Noah had to make a choice to follow God and walk into the ark along with his family. But one problem. The rain's coming and I am not strong enough. My family is not strong enough. Our congregation is not strong enough to shut the door from the rain. So God said, I just asked you to build. I'll shut the door. The Bible says the Lord shut him in. I couldn't close that door. You're not supposed to close that door. It's supposed to be God closing that door. That's too big for me, God. That's right. I'm going to shut you in. What was God doing in Noah like he's doing in many of us tonight? And what he'll continue to do, he shuts us in. He puts us in him. He's in the ark. He shut the door. We sing that song, Lord, open the skies and rain down, open the floodgates of heaven. Lord, for many times I was picturing the rain coming and as, as coming and just a blessing here, a blessing there, a blessing here and a blessing there and a blessing here and a blessing. I'm getting wet everywhere. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. But in this text, the rain was a destroyer. It destructed sin and earth. Today, is the second month of the 17th day. In Scripture, let's read it. Genesis 7, verse 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, he was 600 years old. In the second month and on the 17th day. On that day, the fountains of the great deep were broken and the windows of heaven opened up. What did he say? He said, today he's going to rain and I'm going to break everything. And my rain is not necessarily going to bring you a new car. It's going to wipe away the sin in your life. Come on. Many of us need to stop thinking about getting a brand new home. Start thinking about getting that sin out of our life. Come on, somebody. Stop thinking about that new job. Get the sin out of our life. Come on, somebody. Get it out of our life. Get it out of my life in the name of Jesus. Whew. You see, that's what happens. On that day, Lewis, the windows of heaven opened up. It wasn't showers of, of blessings for the ones that were in sin. It was a shower of destruction. But for those that were in the ark with who? They were floating. They were sailing. Come on. In the midst of violence, in the midst of evil, in the midst of our world today, his believers who walk with him, listen, church, have grace, salvation, have favor, promotion. Come on, somebody. Have the power. 
against sin. Come on. Temptation does not rule you. Come on, somebody. And you also have an open ear for instructions for what's next to build. Come on, somebody. Give a word a great hand clap. Mm. 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 That got to sink in, guys. It got to sink in. It got to sink in. Don't go to sleep tonight without asking God for forgiveness, without blessing Him for life and grace, and without blessing Him for giving His Son, Jesus. Because Jesus is our ark. They were in there 150 plus days, but it rained for 40 nights and 40 days. Come on. The Lord shut him in. Let me tell you, church, there's a day his grace closes. Not every pastor will tell you that. <coughs> that door will shut. Do you think Noah heard the yells? Absolutely. Do you think he heard the, the shouting, the bagging? Absolutely. Mo, uh, Noah didn't, couldn't close the door. What does that tell you? He couldn't what? Because it wasn't his grace. It was God's grace. And that's why it's important to be in his grace. Come on. So it's important to say yes to him and to walk with him. Father, I have done what you have asked me to do. And I have released the word of faith into a generation that knows now what is to come. The ark represents Jesus. The flood then is now the tribulation that is to come. We don't know when, but we know it is coming. And you said for those that are with you that we will found grace and favor. Church, the workers were building the ark but they did not make it in the ark we can work and work and work and work for God but if our hearts are not in the grace of God friend we will not make it because work does not save you Grace in Jesus saves you and changes you. You cannot be born again and walk in your sin. You must say yes to him and turn from every wicked way. I'm not here to tell you what is wicked and what's evil. I'm here to tell you God is just and God is love. And there's an open door right now for you to receive his ultimate grace and forgiveness. You might be feeling right now, well, man, why do I feel this way? It's not the words that have been said, it is God moving right now through you. And that's a great thing. Conviction is not condemnation. Father, you're our only judge. And you judge our walk, you judge our talk. And you see everything. 
and you know all things. So Lord, tonight, let our hearts burn for you and may our walk continue to find your grace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. He's a great God. And he's always faithful. And I love you. Amen. And we're all the family of God. And we're going to go into that saving ark together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to receive a tithe and an offering. And bless the name of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for just your obedience and your faithfulness. But I can tell you thank you, but really, it, 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 my thank you don't count. It's the Lord who will bless you. The Lord who will supply and give to you. So obey and trust in the Lord. The tenth, that's the tithe of your, your, the tenth of your income. And that is the blessing of the Lord. It is His. And He asks for our obedience to bless Him. And we do that. And our offering is to provide and to help the work of the Lord and to see the ministry move forward in His grace. And we do that and we see the work of the Lord. I am proud to announce that another 50 chairs have been ordered. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So hopefully in a week or two or some, whenever, praise the Lord. They'll, well, I'll call and I'll say, I need some helpers because whew, it is great to build. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So to God be the glory. Here, just grab your seed of faith. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this seed as we surrender it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come and sow a seed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring down all around the world we're singing. Bring lift our containers of faith and let's bless this seed. Father, your people have sown tonight and by faith we know that we are sowing and giving to you. And Lord, in our giving, in our love, our talent, our treasure, our time, Lord, you bless our hand. So Lord, I bless this seed and I declare that as it marches forward, the kingdom of darkness does not prevail. The kingdom of your son, dear light, prevails. In the name of Jesus, we call it blessed. Someone say, it's blessed. Amen. Come on, someone say, the blessings of the Lord. Make me rich. Come on. And add no sorrow. Tell your neighbor I'm a rich person. Come on. Tell someone else I'm a rich person. Thank you to our ushers. Come on. Let's sing one more time. Rain. Rain down. All around the world we're singing. Rain.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, how many of you love tonight's service? Amen. amen. Come on. How many of you know that Noah was a, was, a, was a man who walked with God? Praise the Lord. Amen. What a blessing. And I love how it brought it down to even the day. Praise the Lord. So that was wonderful. And I love how the Lord is just moving and working through living faith. And many, 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 many homes of, of the Lord as he is being uh, fully given the, 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 the way of his spirit. So it's a blessing. For those that are watching around the world, God bless you. And thank you for taking living faith to your living room. Amen. We need to make a banner, Tommy. Living faith to your living room. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but I encourage you. I encourage you that even as we're praising and worshiping God, just don't sit down, worship with us, amen with us, love with us as we love the world. Amen. amen. Come on, give our online viewers a great hand clap. <laughs> hundreds, hundreds view weekly. It's a blessing, and it's a blessing as we give and give to them. Um, the only announcement I have is for our men on the 27th of this month, February, it's a Saturday, we're going to be hosting a men's breakfast right in here. It's Master's Commission Men's Breakfast, 27th of this month, 10 a.m. It's on our calendar there in our website. So I want to invite every every man and, and come. We're going to have just a great time of, of breakfast and fellowship and praise and, and the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen? What a blessing. So invite your husband and tell everybody, come on to the house of God. So that's good. Amen and amen. Sunday's church, we got good church, good Spanish service at 930, and then a good service at 10, great service at 1045. What a blessing. So it's a good thing. Why don't you love on some people? Don't rush out. Love on some people as you exit. <coughs> to God be the glory. Love you. See you Sunday. He knows my name. Every step that I take. Every move that I make